Hey what's up guys, OSG here and I'm continuing with the best racing game series and today we will be looking at the Commodore Amiga. I actually started this list a while ago but now I've done the C64 list it's time to get this list out there. And if you thought the C64 list was good, be prepared to be blown away by this list because it's not what I thought. The game that I thought was going to be top only made 4 and that's how good this list is. So here we go, the 20 best Commodore Amiga racing games in order of greatness. In 20th place is Lamborghini American Challenge, made by the same people as Crazy Cars 3 which is also on the list. It's virtually the same game as Crazy Cars 3 but with a Lamborghini brand. I wasn't going to have this in but then me and my son played the multiplayer game and it made it something that Crazy Cars 3 didn't have. Nineteen position is taken by Super Off Road. The fact that this game which is almost arcade perfect is in 19th place just shows how strong this list is going to be. Like I said in the C64 video this is still one of my favourite racing games on the arcade and it's every bit as good in our homes. Micro Machines is in 18th place. I love this game so much, it's so good with the quirky tracks. I mean what other game can you race around in speedboats in a bowl of Cheerios? The game plays fast and the two player mode is a lot of fun. In 17th place we have Street Rod 2. In many ways this improved on the first great game with more cars and more parts, but they lost some of the gameplay that made that game super special. While it's certainly not as good as the first game, it's still worth playing especially if you like the building the car bit of the first game. Sixteen position is taken by Crazy Cars 3. This is a straightforward arcade style racing game here. It's nice and fast, looks nice and the controls are responsive. Misses the two player option that Lamborghini had but I still think it's a better game overall. Lotus 3 Ultimate Challenge is in 15th place, the third in the Lotus series and while it's the worst in the series that's only because the other two games were extraordinarily good. Although this game has way more features than the previous game there's something about this game that made me feel a bit let down but I actually think that was down to the fact that Lotus 2 was near perfect. In 14th we have no second prize. This is the only motorbike game on the list and it's a good one. But it's also a hard one too. It has mouse control which is tricky to get a hang of at first. But once you do you'll be whizzing round the track at breakneck speeds with realistic handling.
Indie Heat is in 13th position. As with a C64, this is a super sprint type game. It has loads of speed, good speech samples and nice graphics. The gameplay is much the same as the C64 version, but this is more pleasing to the eyes and ears. In 12th place is Supercars, one of the first games I played and loved on the Amiga. I love the top down racing action and the whole game is a joy to play. The music adds a lot to this game and this is one of my most nostalgic games on the Amiga. Eleventh place is taken by Roadkill. This is like supercars on steroids. It's fast, and I mean super fast, which can make the turns difficult. But if you crash, you can catch up, which I like. And the course is littered with pickups to aid you in this super smooth, great looking and sounding game. Skid Marks is in 10th place. When this came out I was blown away with how fast it was. I love the drifting mechanics of this game, which still plays good today. The only slight problem I have with it is that once you crash it can be hard to catch up as most of the time you end up going the wrong way after a crash. In 9th position we have Super Skid Marks, the sequel to the previous game and it's much the same as that game but for me this one is a little bit better gameplay and the car control makes this game more enjoyable. Eighth place is taken by Street Rod. This was the original game and it's a classy looking story type racing game. You have to buy a classic hot rod and then take it to the garage, put some decent parts on. Once you're sorted you can take it out on the streets and race in a bid to one day be king and take his car and his girlfriend. Lotus S3 Turbo Challenge takes 7th place. This was the first in the Lotus series, and when it came out, nothing matched it for graphics and sense of speed. Even though it's not the best in the series, it's still a solid arcade style racing game, and one that I often still play. In 6th place is Vroom. Vroom is like Formula 1 for maniacs. It's got hyper speed and the controls are so responsive that the slightest mistake will send you off the track into a signpost. It's a hard game to master but one worth the time, because when you do, racing doesn't get much faster than this on the Amiga.
Fifth position goes to Supercars 2. Gremlin Games again and this is my favourite top down racer of all time. Everything in this game was an improvement from the already great first game. The music sends me right back to when I was a kid playing this in my mate's loft. The controls are much improved and the whole game is class. Stunt Car Racer is in 4th place. Yes that's right, 4th place, it was a shock to me too and it's probably my most played Amiga game ever. This is the best version of the game with great looks. While not being as fast as the ST version, it's still fast enough and the whole experience is like no other game on the system. In third place is Lotus Turbo Challenge 2. Different people have their own favourites in the Lotus series, but for me this is a definitive game. From the off, the theme music sets you up for a high octane adrenaline fueled experience that when it comes to arcade races on the Amiga is unbeatable. Second place is taken by Indianapolis 500. This was and still is one of the best racing simulators ever made. The accurate controls and speed were unmatched when it came out, making it a firm favourite with both racing game fans and simulator fans. And now, in first place, is Formula 1 Grand Prix. Jeff Crammond, who was responsible for Stunt Car Racer, knocked it out of the park with this game. This is as perfect as a 16-bit Formula 1 simulator can get, with realistic handling, great looking hood and rival cars. I could pit this against newer Formula 1 simulators and the gameplay would still hold up, it's just so good. Ok that's it for this video, let me know in the comments below what your favourite Omega racing games were and if you haven't already please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content. Till next time, this is OSG signing out.